Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. I just want you to know I'm back, okay? Everything should be getting smoother now, more regular videos, and the kind of production that I was doing before. But today, I've got a few things I want to talk about, and I've got a note here to tell me what they are. First of them is I had a request from uh, Rericus, Rericus9891 about uh, Faza, the uh, crown prince of um, uh, the Saudi crown prince. So Faza and his involvement with the Paralympics. Then we're going to talk about Henry Cavill, Bond, his movie Argyle, and uh, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, which is another uh, video that he's got coming out in the first part of this year, the Argyle and the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. So we'll look at those two things. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is going to be Donald Trump. He is scared of spending his life in prison. And I can tell you that's what I think is happening. But uh, we're going to see what the cards say about those two things. So Thank you for waiting for me. I'm glad I got these two requests a little uh, more uh, back in line for you. And um, here we go. Okay, so it's going to start right now. Uh, we're going to look at um, those three topics. It was uh, Faza, the Crown Prince, uh, the Saudi Crown Prince, uh, Henry Cavill, and uh, what's going to happen in the first part of 2024 with Argyle, the movie, and the um, what is it, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Those sound like good movies, and I don't think Bond's going to make it for him. Uh, so hopefully, I'll remember to talk about that. And then also, Donald Trump is he actually facing the reality that he's probably going to spend the rest of his life in prison in some way, shape, or form. And I think that's what's getting to him right now. So that's what we'll look at. Uh, we're going to start out with these great cards, the Druidcraft Tarot. The, uh, the box is a little difficult to use because you have to kind of dump everything out, but the cards are kind of worth the hassle. So we'll get this uh, lined up here and put away and waiting for um, the cards at the end of the whole thing. Remember, I'll tell you more about these cards at the end of the video. Uh, I don't get paid for that. It's just that's something that I wanted to see when I was making videos. And so I decided uh, to do that. And what I've done is I've just recorded a little bit about each of the about 60. You can see them behind me about the 60 um, sets of cards that I have. And so whenever I use a new deck, I try to remember to um, go ahead and put that um little description and it's at the end of the video so if you want to see about these cards and more know about them you're going to find out there again not something i get paid for just i always want to know about the cards when i was uh being a uh, viewer so prince faza let's do um three cards and see if we want to do another three on that and uh, specifically i want to uh, uh talk about his involvement in the paralympics but before we do anything let's have just a moment for all of these three guys a moment of meditation. So right off the bat, uh, we're going to talk about uh, Prince Faza, the uh, Saudi uh, prince. His involvement in uh, the Paralympics is amazing. I mean, he's uh, sensitive. He's a, um, a poet. I think he may be a songwriter. Of course, you can always take someone's poems and turn them into uh, music. Um, he's got a charmed life let's face it any of us in his situation but you have other uh, crown princes in that area who have are leading such um uh rude 
kind of lives, you know, a dictatorish. Uh, so I don't know. And I don't know much about Faz's father, if he was this kind of a, a leader also. But um, so we're going to say three cards of Faz's involvement with the um, Paralympics. Just three cards to see if it can sort of define that for us. And maybe we'll turn that into a six card draw. I'm not guaranteeing it, but perhaps. Okay, Prince Faza, Paralympics. So look at this. This is what he brings to this. He is the star. Okay, so he's the attraction. He brings attention to the events. And, uh, and that's uh, working perfectly for him. The Ten of Pentacles is about... Um, familial wealth, generational prosperity, generational influence. And uh, he certainly has that. That describes his whole, that's that's who he, he only is, Prince Faza, because of the light that his, um, his uh, family heritage brings to him. And then the final card about his involvement with the Paralympics, look at this. This is a Seven of Pentacles. The Seven of Pentacles is a perfect card to get for this because this is always wondering, have I done enough? You see the pentacles right here. The person kind of pruning looks like mistletoe, which is interesting because mistletoe uh, has a loving a history to it. So yeah, he's wondering, has he, Prince Faza, has he given enough emotion to this? Beautiful way to start it out. Let's turn this into six cards. So that would be the signifier then is that he is the star. The second card I pulled, which is a challenge to the signifier, is a Ten of Pentacles, which is his familial um, generational value. And then the base of the whole thing is him wondering, have I done enough? And then we'll take three more cards to round out this uh, reading for Prince Faza regarding the Paralympics, okay? So right here, we're going to say the past of this is the Princess of Swords. Swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And the Princess of Swords would kind of uh, make me think about uh, perhaps any of the women who are involved with him. And that, but that's, that's the past as far as his most important things that he's worried about. In the sky of this, with this Queen of Pentacles, this is a feminine, loving, va pentacles, pentacles are value. They can be money, which he, is, he brings that with him just because of who he is. But the Queen of Pentacles is in the sky of this reading. And so it brings all of that beautiful feminine energy, that emotional um, consistency to uh, make sure that this uh, stays um, in everyone's uh, brain right at the beginning. And then the final card, which will be the final uh, outcome for this, is going to be ah oh, the tower moment. But you know what this refers to for me? For most of these Paralympians, there was a tower moment in their life that brought them to this place where they are now. And so it's very fitting that the final outcome is featuring that tower moment because it is featuring those Paralympians. So just to read it again quickly, yeah, he is the star and that's what he brings to this. The challenge is his familial baggage, really. Um, the base of the whole thing is him, Prince Faz is saying, have I done enough? Trimming that beautiful mistletoe. Uh, yeah, have I done enough? And then in the past of it are the female troubles perhaps uh, that were brewing. And in the sky of this, with this Queen of Pentacles, is just the uh, loving, valuable energy guiding everything. And then the final outcome brings it right back to those Paralympians, and that's as it should be. So very interesting read for Prince Faza. Now we're gonna jump right into uh, Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. So amazing actor. I, he wasn't on my radar until some of you viewers decided uh, that I needed to do a reading on him uh, last year sometime, I believe it was the first time I read on Henry Cavill. And as it turns out, I find out he's, a, he's, he's quite a substantial person. He's not just a pretty face. Uh, he's got talent and knows how to do it. He has acting skill. And the movies that he's in show that. So the first two that are coming out for him are I Got Argyle and the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Three cards. Let's see how those are going to go for Henry Cavill. Okay. First card right here is going to be the Ace of Cups. So the Ace is a great big offering. Cups are emotion, compassion. And so the Ace of Cups is, is him bringing all that power to those roles. The uh, second, the Two of Pentacles, is balancing your value, balancing your worth. Okay, two movies, okay? 
And then the final outcome regarding those two movies is the Seven of Cups. And like the Seven of Pentacles, where you're wondering if you've done enough, Seven of Cups is kind of having to face the illusion of different choices that have to be made. So it's also a decision-making card. Yeah, we're going to turn this into a six-card draw, too. So in the order they came out, it would be uh, the signifier card is the Ace of Pentacles, great big offer of emotional uh, value, really. It's challenged by balancing the value that's a uh, necessary to get that career in order. The Seven of Cups is the illusion and and that's all about movie making in itself, image, and how is he going to uh, uh, manage all of that. That's the base of the whole thing. The next three cards then are going to be in the past of this for Henry Cavill is the Chariot. So things came up quickly actually. The sky of this is justice. And you know what? That's justice in his career, okay? Finding the, um, the, the recognition, the star power that he deserves, that's what's in the sky of this. And then the final outcome for Henry Cavill is this King of Pentacles. He is the king. He is the master of his value, okay? Uh, he's on the road to bigger stuff even yet. Now, the last thing we want to talk about, literally, but uh, that people are interested in Donald Trump. And it seems to me that this latest issue um, with him uh, making a statement at that uh, trial uh, Letitia James has going on uh, to really uh, kneecap his, his company, certainly at least in the state of New York. And, um, but it seems like I think he's finally understood that when everything with all these trials comes to a head, it's going to be him who is suffering and uh, going to spend, I think, the rest of his life in prison. So let's do three cards. Rest of his life in prison. One, two, three. Donald Trump. Is that really going to happen? Or at least is it the four the front type of thing? So the Ten of Cups. This is um, emotional value. This is a typically happy, uh, like happy family, but it, it's, it harkens back to a generational emotion. Ah, this is what the deal is. It is his legacy. That's what's at stake here. We're going to make this a six card draw. And then uh, the challenge to that is this four of wands. Four of wands, sometimes people call it the marriage card or a smaller celebration on towards something bigger. And I think that's where we're at here. Th this um, victory... Uh, and in, in this regard, I think we have to say it's a victory for the government. Uh, this victory is just a small step on towards the big payoff uh, eventually. The basis of this reading for Donald Trump is feeling trapped. The Eight of Swords, truth, justice, rules, and law has this person completely uh, confused. The thing is, is, if this person would just relax and face what's going on, they would find a way out. If Donald Trump would, would face the reality and he could change his image. Americans are very forgiving, not the MAGA ones, the normal folks. The past of this for Donald Trump and uh, worrying about spending his life in prison, Ace of Cups, it's, it is in the past that great big um, emotional value that people have been giving him is waning. It's in the past. In the sky of this reading for Donald Trump is the Eight of Pentacles practicing your craft. His craft is the grift. And he has got to continue to practice that uh, craft. And then the final outcome for Donald Trump, okay, is the Seven of Swords. Uh, this is uh, a, abuse of power. This is a theft and betrayal. And this old man with his Seven of Swords right here, Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law, is worrying over his legacy that he's writing down regarding that theft and betrayal. Pretty interesting. Hang on, I'm gonna show you the card. So this is the Druid Craft Tarot, and uh, it's sort of uh, on the magic of uh, Wicca and uh, Druidity, or Druidry, maybe that's the uh, correct uh, uh, terminology. Uh, Philip and Stephanie Carr Gom, uh, with illustrations by Will Worthington. Really nice deck. Um, they're a little, um, the, car, the box is fantastic, because you really feel like you got a nice quality uh, gift if you gave that. The guidebook is huge, and uh, the only thing I would say is that it's a shame it's not in full color, but it gives you some, some useful uh, divination uh, for the cards in there, so I like that. 
the cards themselves, the one uh, gripe I have is that you have to dump them out of the box, which I'm not that happy about. But uh, the cards themselves, they're huge, so some people might find them a little awkward to use, but I like them. And uh, the divination that you get out of them is amazing. There's so much thought that went into each picture, every element of each picture. And um, so they're very useful in almost any uh, circumstance where you're going to use these. And I like to spread them out like this. Uh, if I'm doing a reading with someone, then I like to usually let them uh, spread them out like this to kind of get their energy into the cards. It's a good way to mix them up without you know, damaging the cards too much, uh, which is uh, always important to me. So, these cards are fantastic. Druidcraft Tarot. 